In today's video, I will show you how to use the Movie Database API to create the project that you see here. So currently it's showing the trending movies, but if I click on the trending TV button, it will now display all the trending TV shows for the current week. To get started on how to build this project yourself, the only two things you need to understand are how to use the Movie Database API as well as a basic understanding of React. If you have never used the Movie Database API before, I have another video on my channel showing you the exact step-by-step -step process of how you can get started making calls to the Movie Database API. Once you have a basic understanding of how to make API calls to the Movie Database API, we can now get started by looking at the code. So I'll switch over to the code now. Also, before I explain how the code works, I will upload all this code to a public Git repo so you can download the project and run it yourself. So the first thing we want to do is to import the use effect and use state React hook from React. Next, we just want to install the Axios package so that we can easily make HTTP calls. And for the last import, we just import the app.css file. Here, we just created a movie data variable that will hold all of the movie data or TV data that we get back from the movie database API. Starting on line 15, I created a function that will actually make the API call to the movie database API. In case you're wondering how I knew to make this exact API call, I'll just switch over to the documentation. You can get this page by going to the movie DB API documentation page and click on the trending keyword here. Once you're on this page, you can read the description, but it will get us to daily or weekly trending items. We can also see that we can pass in a specific media type and it tells us here that the media type can either be all movie, TV, or a person. You can also pass in a time window as well to either get the trending movies or TV shows for the day or for the week. If we click on try it out and scroll down, we can see that the API call here is the API call that we need to make and we just need to replace the variables with the specific variables that we want. Going back to the project, you can see I copied it exactly. The only thing I did was switch out the media type with a type variable, and this would just depend on what's being passed in. Right now I'm passing in movie by default, but if you click on the TV button, you can see here that I pass in the type of TV instead of movie. That way we show the trending TV shows for the week. The last variable is just your API key, which I have mine right here. But when I upload the project, I'm going to erase this. So you need to use your own API key. If you watch the other video on my channel, I show you the exact step-by-step -step process of how to generate your own API key as well. So just make sure to watch it if you have any trouble with that. Once you have your own API key, just make sure to replace the variable here. Once you completed those steps, you should now be able to run the project successfully. Here on line 19, I'm printing out the actual results so we get back from the API. If we switch over to the project, and look at the console and just refresh the page. You can now see the results that we get back from the movie database API, and this is specifically for movies. And so for example, the very first movie we see has to do with the movie Troll and all of its attributes. If we go back to the code, you can see that we're just storing all of these results inside the variable that I talked about earlier called movie data. Then if we scroll down, you can see on line 52, this is where I just iterate through all the items inside the movie array and display them on the page. If you look at line 37, I just have the two buttons here, one for trending movies and the other one for trending TV shows. The last important thing I want to point out is how I'm displaying the images from the Movie Database API. If we go back to the documentation and we look on the left hand side and click on the one that says images, it will explain how to display the images based on the data that we get back from the Movie Database API call. So based on the response that we get back, we should get back a key that says poster path with a value of some random identifier. And this is the identifier we need to use to actually display the image. Once we get back the identifier, we would just use this URL here and just make sure to replace the identifier with the identifier that we get back from the API call. If we go back to the project and look at the console again, we can see that for the troll movie that we have a poster path and it gives us an ID here. So once we have this value, I'm just using it as part of the API call and just making sure to replace it here and just specifying a width of 300. One last thing I wanted to mention was the app.css file. These are all the classes I use. I'm not going to go in depth into each one. You can just download the project and explore it for yourself. But I just wanted to quickly go over that. And that's pretty much the entire project. Although this was a small project, I just want to give you an idea of what kind of projects you could make using the Movie Database API. If you want to see a more in-depth project using the Movie Database API, please leave a comment. And if there's enough interest, I would definitely consider releasing a more advanced version of this tutorial. And that is the end of this tutorial. If this video helped you in any way, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.